going to concentrate on a post-flight check on our machine. We've just been flying, we've had a great time, we're thinking about going for a beer, but what we really need to do is just to have our, give our machine a quick check over so that we know if there's any adjustments or maintenance that's necessary, it's done in preparation for, uh, for our next flight. Okay. So we're going to break it down into three components. We're going to check the harness first, then the chassis, and then work our way through to the engine. On this machine, we have uh, a harness here with low hang points. It's attached at the top here and on our swinging arms and also at the back here with some straps as well. What we're going to do first of all is just check that our leg straps, the only things that hold us in when, we're, when we take off first of all is our leg straps. We want to make sure that we've got no dirt or grit or debris inside these. These are safety clips. We should be able to push one or the other and it doesn't come out. But by pushing both together, it allows us to release this one, okay? So we check those all the way around first of all. The next thing we check is the attachment of the harness to the chassis, okay? Up here we have a bar secured to the chassis here. We're just making sure that these are all okay. The next thing to check is our attachment of our harness to the swing arms here. This is a low attachment uh, system. We have a shackle system here. We need to make sure that our shackles are done up tight here and that there's no play in these. We also have a shackle on the end here, here and here. These are our carabiners. These are the only things that keep us connected to the wing. All the other things here could fail and we still become attached to the wing with the carabine. They can become very weak if they are not closed properly. In a fully closed position, they are incredibly strong. In an open position, they can become pretty weak. So we need to make sure that our carabiners close and lock. It's straps, shackles, and attachment from the harness to the chassis. That is our basic harness check. Now we move on to the chassis. Here we're just going to check the swing arm. This one is unique because our bolt head is not exposed when our frame is in place. Other machines you need to check that have an exposed bolt. This one is secure, there's no movement in there. This machine is in three parts. One, two, three. And these are secured by pit pins here. And we're just making sure that those are all okay. Some other machines, may have clips or straps. Just from a visual check we can see that these are all in place. We also have some netting here. Let's just check that all the netting is intact. There's nothing loose here. Some other netting is held in place with cable ties. Those cable ties can become loose. They can fly through your prop and then they can leave your netting very loose as well. Our reserve system uh, are secured and locked in place and that it is secured correctly to the chassis. Everything else is there in place inside here. We can see our bridle and we want to make sure that these are also secured tightly. The best way to check uh, our engine is actually to clean it. Here I have a rag and I have some carburetor cleaner or brake cleaner. You're starting with the propeller. First of all check that your bolts are all tight and then clean your propeller. It means that we keep it clean for one thing but it also makes sure that we check any imperfections that might have happened on our propeller on our last flight. Our propeller is connected to the reduction drive. Okay, this is a reduction drive, not a belt drive. This is unique, this engine. It has uh, a clutch inside, a wet clutch like a motorcycle, and everything is bathed in oil. Okay, so we have a filler here. This is also a vent, so it's possible that we can get uh, some oil coming out of here. So we need, when we're doing our cleaning, we need to make sure that we don't have any oil splatters around here. It might mean that our oil level has been reduced inside the reduction drive. Okay, and let's make sure that it just spins nicely and that we don't get any nasty noises or clunks coming from the reduction drive. Carburetor, we need to check for, uh, again, for leaks and uh, if it's covered in a residue of fuel and uh, oil, then we know that we might have a situation there uh, where we have a leak or um, a possible diaphragm split or something like that. And while we're on the with the carburetor, just make sure that we have smooth action with our throttle. It's possible that our air boxes can come loose as well, and these are attached usually to the chassis also. If this attachment to the chassis comes off, then it's possible the air box can spin into the propeller. This has happened on a number of occasions. And, uh, and also we have a clamp here, just making sure that that clamp is secure. This is our exhaust system. Uh, they're usually 
clamp to the cylinder by two or three bolts. This one has a two bolt system and it has a safety wire going through the springs. Aha, we've found something here that's not working very well. Okay, so this needs replacing and we have time to do that now before our next flight. So it's good that we have done a post-flight check. Moving on through the exhaust system, this is the hottest part of the exhaust here. This is where it's possible to get cracks and for other irregularities to happen in our exhaust system. Okay. It has a lot of vibration, resonance and heat. The expansion chamber and there we have a number of clamps and rubber mountings for the clamps. These get an incredible workout. Okay. They need constant checking. Uh, it's just two plates that are glued on to a piece of rubber. Okay, so really all that's hanging, that exhaust is just hanging from bits of glue, so uh, we need to check those constantly. This is the silencer as well. They can leak from time to time. They get an incredible workout as well. They're taking power pulses all the time from the engine at very high RPM. So they get an incredible workout. They're built strong though, uh, but they are just riveted together and we have to check that the rivets don't come out and then sometimes the parts of the, uh, the silencer can come out. But that's all in good shape. It looks good, everything's secure. The cylinder of the engine, uh, we need to check this for any leaks. Sometimes you can see around the mating surfaces of the cylinder head and the cylinder itself, you can get uh, seepage, and then we're gonna lose compression and hence lose power as well. This one looks nice and clean inside. There's no obvious signs of anything going wrong. We also have our spark plug on the top there. It's best to uh, have a look at your spark plug after every couple of flights, checking for the correct uh, gap in the spark plug, also the colour and the condition of the spark plug. We're going to move on from the cylinder to the back of the engine. Most engines are mounted at four points and these are all again rubber mountings and we need to check the integrity of these. Again they are just a rubber block with metal discs glued onto them so the whole engine is effectively hanging from a glued spacer onto a rubber block. They get an incredible workout, okay? They have to take all the weight of the engine and all the forces and vibrations associated with a spinning propeller as well. So checking the integrity of the engine mounts and also that they are secured in place by their locking nuts as well. And there we have worked from the engine through to the chassis. We've already checked our chassis and previously we checked our harness. It should take about three or four minutes to do all that.